Wake up! Wake up, you little p huh? Who do you work for? DreamWorks? Answer me, huh? This is South Park and it's rapidly approaching its 25th year of production. What started out as this sort of crass and unpolished Christmas card made from construction paper has grown to become a true cultural phenomenon, providing consistent and poignant social commentary through the eyes of elementary school students. Now, trying to decide which episode of South Park is the best feels almost impossible due to the show's ability to adapt and change. Different episodes might seem perfect for different reasons. Imagination Land is a three-part episode that feels like a feature film. Uh, are you gonna rape us? No. All right then. The return of the Fellowship of the Ring to the Two Towers was also so received that it spawned an entire video game series. Let me have the tape. No, we have to return it. My movie, my awesome cool movie. My precious. And Trey Parker himself has gone on to say that Scott Tennerman must die changed the entire course of the show forever. Out of over 300 episodes, there's one that definitely stands out as being pretty near perfect, and it's definitely a fan favorite. Make Love Not Warcraft is a tightly structured episode of South Park that leaves nothing on the bone. The core of the episode is a biting satire of the gaming culture surrounding MMORPGs. But what makes it work so well is how faithful the plot of the episode remains to not only the gameplay, but also the fantasy genre as a whole. At the core of the episode is an epic fantasy quest, but the writers juxtapose the idea against this backdrop of what is actually happening in the real world. There are a couple of comedic techniques at work here that we're going to be taking a look at. One being game, which is the creation of comedic patterns centered around unusual behaviors, and the other is mapping, which is the process of exploring an idea through a completely different scenario's language and objects. Comedy is like music in the sense that some genres have a much wider appeal than others. There's a saying in comedy that there's no such thing as better, there is only different. Whether or not those different comedic stylings resonate with you is a matter of personal taste. This is where South Park uses the perspectives of children to its advantage. Almost everyone can look back on being in elementary school with some degree of nostalgia. And a vast majority of people have an understanding of the inner workings of our cultural zeitgeist. This is a recipe for establishing a strong connection between the show's creators and the viewers. This part of what makes Love Not Warcraft such a perfect episode of South Park, South Park is at its strongest when the four main characters are doing what feels the most natural for fourth graders to be doing, which is being children. This episode just starts off with children playing the, at the time, most popular video game in America, World of Warcraft. There's nothing really too crazy going on until we get to what is referred to as the first unusual thing. In the case of Make Love Not Warcraft, that first unusual thing is this weird shirtless player being able to break the rules of World of Warcraft. This is the beginning of a comedic principle known as game. We see this in a lot of shorter comedic forms, for example, sketch comedies like Key and Peele. You done messed up, A.A. Ron! Now take your ass on down to Oshag Hennessy's office right now and tell him exactly what you did! Or Saturday Night Live use game all the time. Mommy! Can I have some more juicy drink? Of course you can. Yes! We also see it in longer formats like Parks and Rec, Rick and Morty, and in this case, South Park. The most important function of game is establishing a strong base reality. The base reality of Make Love Not Warcraft is established in just the first few moments of the episode where we see our characters interacting as their avatars within World of Warcraft. This sets our expectations as the writers are essentially promising us that we are going to be seeing more and more of this video game world. The base reality is further cemented when Randy Marsh enters the room to reprimand Stan for his computer usage. I am socializing, Artard. I'm logged on to an MMORPG with people from all over the world and getting XP with my party using TeamSpeak. I'm not a Artard. As we now have a firm understanding that this episode will be bouncing back and forth between World of Warcraft and the real world. This is one of the only times South Park changes its animation style. They could have very easily created a World of Warcraft using South Park's style of animation. However, the decision to utilize machinima and assets from Blizzard themselves to construct an in-game world creates a rigid dichotomy between fantasy and reality that really drives this point, and in turn the comedy, home to the viewer. All of this setup work is done in the first two minutes of the episode. It's extremely efficient and helps us get to the fun faster. The first unusual thing is established when the aforementioned weird shirtless guy kills the avatars of Stan, Kyle, Kenny, and Cartman, thus breaking the rules of World of Warcraft. 
This shouldn't have happened, so it stands out as being kind of weird. The shock of this event triggers a largely emotional reaction from the boys. They are shocked and agitated. Who is that guy? Whoever he is, he is one tough badass. This emotional reaction is what really clues us in as viewers as to what is unusual about this situation. Now that the base reality of this episode has been established and the first unusual thing has been identified, the writers then move into the more fun parts of writing in this style, which are pattern and heightening. The writers begin to venture out and explore the world that they have started to develop. There's a phrase for this as well. If this is true, then what else is true? This is the question comedy writers need to ask themselves when they are creating patterns within their stories. This thought process allows for a rich exploration of what makes the episode so fun within the context of the presented reality. If it is true that a player is able to break the rules of World of Warcraft, then surely it must be true that the company who makes the game is aware of it and is currently making attempts to solve the issue. And this is where the tool of mapping comes into play, playing an idea out through another scenario's language and objects. Take the 2020 Vince Vaughn horror comedy Freaky as an example. They map the body swapping plot of Freaky Friday directly over a film like Friday the 13th, and the result is a high school girl swapping bodies with a seemingly unstoppable killer. In the case of Make Love Not Warcraft, they map a relatively stereotypical end of the world scenario directly over the maintenance and gameplay of World of Warcraft, and they call it out in an overt manner throughout the episode. And this gives the writers a roadmap of how to handle and play with the remainder of the episode. Once this is all established, the comedy of the entire episode becomes easy for the viewer to follow and easy for the writers to heighten. We sort of feel like we've done the work along with the writers to get to where we are at. Because this work was done so well, the writers have now earned the right to do all of these sort of outlandish things we see throughout the episode. The remainder of the episode is mapped directly over the plot of any call to action in any film and presented in an extremely truncated format. There's the call to action, the all is lost moment, the government can't fathom what is happening. There's even a training montage. All of this happens in just a few brief moments, all while cutting away to the real world consequences of everyone's actions, which is just gaining a ton of weight in front of their computers. The work the writers do here leads to a pretty amazing climax. Looks like you're about to get pwned. Yeah! complete with themes of vengeance, justice. Dad? Dad? Stan. I've never been able to say this before, but I love you, son. And violently pooping into bowls. There's some nice melodrama to round out some of the cheesier moments, and the episode ends up with one final call out that they can finally start playing the game. I can't believe it's all over. What do we do now? What do you mean? Now we can finally play the game. Oh yeah. Okay, can he ask Which is an effective callback to the first minute of the episode in which the boys are just trying to enjoy their new video game. It's a nice little bow on top of an episode that feels like it never spends a single second dragging its feet. Make Love Not Warcraft is South Park at its very best. It's a biting statement about the importance people place on their characters in video games, told through the eyes of children, and mapped over an end of day scenario. South Park weaves this story through a streamlined comedic structure that is designed to fill us with excitement and anticipation. Through the use of the game structure, we have a rough understanding of where the show is going, but the fun in watching it comes from how the writers use that to surprise us along the way. There are sciences to writing comedy and game is just one of them. They are tried and true theories, philosophies and formulas, and when you apply them to an idea, it can take something that is objectively funny and elevate it into something that seems polished, concise, and intentional. We can take something as boring as watching a child play a video game and turn it into something that feels epic, fun. Well, there's only like four races to choose from. So pick another one. I'm the dwarf, you stupid <laughs> Log out, create a new character, and log back in. I like Hello Kitty on an adventure a lot more than this stuff. When you apply the right tools to the right job, you set yourself up for success with a much lower margin of error. Make Love Not Warcraft is a near perfect example of how great comedy is earned through hard work. And that's it for this week. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. You might see a couple of links here for some of our other videos, so click on those if you want to stick around and we will see you next time.